Hi everybody. Today's YouTube video is a litter update video for these mini Labradoodle puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Doodles and today's video is going to be a litter update on each of the five mini Australian Labradoodle puppies from this litter. And we are going to give you an update on each of the puppies, a little bit of information on Bernadette, and we'll give you each of the puppies' weights, and we hopefully will get them all to open their eyes because their eyes are all open now. Today's video is going to be a little bit different though as we have kennel cough in this litter. So what does that mean? Kennel cough is a bronchial respiratory uh, illness that dogs get very frequently. Kennel cough is transmitted through the air with little droplets, very similar to how COVID is transmitted. And how did these puppies get kennel cough? Well, what happened was Bernadette first got kennel cough. She contracted kennel cough from uh, one of our other guardian dogs who was here for an overnight visit. And when that dog came, she was totally asymptomatic. She was fine, she was normal. She'd been to have her hair done, came here, spent the night, had her pictures taken and went home. And on the morning when she went home, she was coughing and we knew it was kennel cough. Now you will be able to hear these puppies coughing. That's Red Collar who's coughing right now. You can hear her coughing. There and there, she's finished now. Kennel cough is what the symptoms are is there is congestion in the nasal cavity, in the tracheal area, and also this cough. And you can hear Black Collar's doing a little coughing too. It sounds far worse than it is, especially when you have a little puppy. It's always distressing when young children or young puppies are in any way not feeling too well. So Bernadette got kennel cough from our other dog and it was almost 10 days before Bernadette showed us any symptoms. We thought we had escaped luckily and that she hadn't caught it, but unfortunately she did. It just took a while to manifest itself. Bernadette herself now is completely recovered from kennel cough. Kennel cough is not something that is of any concern for adult dogs as a general rule. As long as they're healthy, they are not going to have any trouble with kennel cough. They'll cough, it's irritating to their throat. It was similar to if you have a cold with a bronchial congestion. And after just uh, 10 days, Bernadette is all back to herself now. She's not coughing. She didn't have any issues even when she was coughing other than the cough. She didn't lose any energy. She didn't lose her appetite and she was well able to care for the babies. Now, of course, she's here. She's nursing the babies. She's breathing on them. She's licking them. So now the babies all have kennel cough as well. Now we're really fortunate at Van Isle Doodles in that our Labradoodle puppies are all supported by a wonderful veterinary clinic at Cobble Hill. So we've been fortunate and already had two house visits uh, from our vet to come and check the puppies to make sure that everything is okay with them. Now what are the concerns here? The main concern is that the bronchial congestion develops into secondary pneumonia. Puppies of this age, if they get pneumonia, have a very slim chance of surviving. They do, it does happen, but the odds are that they're not likely to survive this. So you have to be sure that you're providing them with really good supportive care. And at this point in time, the supportive care that we are providing them with is that they are always eating and drinking regularly. If we see any signs of the puppies not eating enough, and we do that by measuring their weight three times a day, or just by observing them, or if they become at all lethargic, then that is cause for concern. That's another immediate vet visit, and then we will put them on antibiotics. So why don't we put them on antibiotics now? We wish we could. This particular strain of kennel cough is not responsive to antibiotics. Our adult dogs are all infected with kennel cough and we have tried two different types of antibiotics that generally work with kennel cough type of illnesses and neither one of them have been effective. So that tells us that this particular strain is viral and there's nothing you can do. It's just like if you get the flu or a cold, you cannot go and get antibiotics and get better. It's exactly the same for the puppies. 
And with neonates such as this, we don't want to be putting things into their systems that they don't need. We only introduce antibiotics to them if it is a life-saving measure. Otherwise, we want to make sure that their systems stay clean and clear and that they are able to fight off the kennel cough on their own. So the in support for the puppies, other than monitoring them every hour and checking to make sure we want to make sure their breathing is good. You can see here Red Collar is having a little bit of a hiccup with her breathing. That was just while she was unable to swallow properly because she does have a sore throat. And <laughs> she's twitching, but that's just from dreaming. That's not from uh, anything to do with the kennel cough. But we want to make sure that her lungs and her tummy, that her breath is all normal and appearing as it should. Then the other thing we do, as I said, is we make sure they're not lethargic. Right now they all look totally lethargic, but that's because they just had a big feed. And the other thing we're doing with them is we are supporting these puppies with additional fluids and food. Not that Bernadette's not able to feed them. It's just a couple of times when they're eating, some of them are looking for more. And given the circumstances, rather than have them wait until Bernadette has a more milk supply, we are providing them with that through formula. And what we do is we put it in a little milking station. It's a little silicone cylinder and it has four teats off of it. It's very similar to mum. We just put the formula inside of the cylinder and it's made out of medical grade silicone and the puppies can come around four at a time, latch on and nurse. And I can tell you green collar and red collar, probably more of that than they do from Bernadette. Oh my goodness, they have amazing appetites. Uh, as our vet said today when he was here, it's really helpful that we have puppies that are in such excellent shape and really strong, vigorous puppies. It, it gives them a much bigger advantage in being able to ward off any problematic issues from the kennel cough. Now, what does it mean for the puppies going forward? nothing at all except for they're going to have some nice immunity to this particular strain of kennel cough. It has zero impact on them for the rest of their life. It doesn't impact them whatsoever. They may have a little bit of a less weight gain over the next 10 days, but we're monitoring that very carefully. So far, the only one who hasn't kept up with the usual amount of weight gain is Pink Collar Girl here. And so we, but she has not become dehydrated. And we check to see if the puppies are dehydrated by a skin test. You pull their skin test, uh, you pull their skin test, you pull their skin up, and what you want it to do is see it just go like that, where it snaps right back down onto their body. You can hear Bernadette is still doing her patrolling. So there's how we make sure that this puppy is not dehydrated. If the puppy were to become dehydrated at all, the other thing that we do is give them what's called sub-Q fluids. Bernadette, do you want to come in? You want to come in? Let's see. I'm just going to pick Red Collar up because she's having lots of coughing and sometimes just elevating her a little bit helps. So we might as well tell you about Red Collar while we're here. You can see she has her eyes open and these puppies are just about three weeks old. So we will anticipate that their ears are going to be opening up soon too. I do think that Red Collar already can hear a little bit. And I'm not going to hold on to the puppies for long each time because the other really important thing is that we do not stress the puppies. We want them to conserve all of their energy and work towards getting better. So Red Collar's weight is 915 grams. So you can tell that she is not hurting in terms of gaining weight. And she just had a nice little pee there. I just changed the, uh, the rug for them, but I didn't uh, have time to put down their pee pads. Usually I try to do the videos without the, the pee pads and we'll just uh, blot that up with a paper towel. And then what we're going to do is start putting pee pads down for the puppies because they are starting to peep and poo on their own now. And when they start to go to the bathroom on their own, it becomes far too messy. And uh, you can see some of them, you'll see on some of them, they even have little bits of dirt on them, which is from one another pooping on each other sometimes, or they just sit in it afterwards because they're not too steady on their feet yet. Hi, baby girl. How you doing? There, now that she's peed, she's more relaxed and she's willing to show you her beautiful eyes. Now, the other thing we do with the puppies because of the kennel cough is we have different clothing and uh, for each set of puppies. We have three litters of puppies right now. All three litters have puppies that are impacted by the kennel cough. And then our adult dogs, as I said, all have kennel cough. 
So our adult dogs are segregated in an entirely different area of the house so as to avoid any possible risk of them spreading even more of the contaminants through the house. Uh, the other two litters are also segregated from this litter. They're a little bit older, uh, but they're uh, kept away just for that same thing. So we have different clothes and different people who are handling each of the litters and the adult dogs throughout the day. So it's a lot of laundry, <laughs> but it's okay. We're quite prepared to do whatever it takes to make sure that the puppies are, are doing well. So now we'll try and go in birth order here for the rest of the litter and we'll do a fairly quick update just as I said not to stress them any further. So this is No Collar Boy. He's our firstborn puppy in the litter and you can see his beautiful eyes there that he's going to show you. I just want to show everybody your pretty eyes. Oh, such a good boy. This boy is really just incredible with his weight gain. He's at 940 grams so I suspect by tomorrow he is going to be at that one kilogram mark already. That's an amazing amount of weight considering the this little guy has also got a bit of the kennel cough. And you'll see right now, you can't even tell. He's not coughing. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's, it's quite dramatic sounding. So that's our little no color boy, our little chocolate boy. And next is our little black collar girl. Now this little girl is just a doll. We just love this little girl. When our vet was here today and saw her, she is remarkably smaller than everybody else and she always has been quite a small puppy. Now if you'll remember with this puppy, we were having problems with her keeping weight on. We were concerned that she was getting dehydrated and becoming hypoglycemic. When that happens with a puppy, they can actually crash and it can be fatal very, very quickly. They cannot go without, with their um, glycemic levels being an, impacted for hardly any amount of time. And she'll show you her pretty eyes. With her coloring, you can really see how puppy's eyes, when they first open, are all blue. Oh my goodness, now you pooped, okay. Miss Red Collar Girl is just having her entire bathroom pro process going on during this video. And she's also wondering where Bernadette is. So Black Collar Girl, because she wasn't gaining weight uh, earlier, we tube fed her and we did a little video explaining all about tube feeding and it only had to be done for about five days and then she was off to the races. She just needed that little extra kick start. So today when our vet was looking at her, of course I was concerned about her because she is so much smaller and, and she put on such a performance. She didn't want him looking down her mouth. She didn't want him listening to her chest. She didn't want her temperature taken. None of the above, thank you very much. She was incredibly feisty and he really got a kick out of her and he says, well, well she is a very robust puppy despite the fact that she's small. Black Collar Girl is 585 grams, so she is almost half the size of Red Collar Girl. Oh, there you go. Your mom heard you. Who could not hear you with all that complaining? Red Collar Girl is an extremely vocal puppy. She absolutely knows what she wants and she knows how to get it. She knows just the right sounds to make for her mom to pay attention to her. And she is has no problem letting the entire world know when she's not getting what she wants. And Bernadette's just cleaning up after her there. And I'm just gonna see if I can get Bernadette to, to, sit, uh, to lie down here so that Red Collar Girl will maybe feel a little bit more settled. There we go. There we go. There. There we go. There. There we go, Red. The Red Collar Girl just consumed enough for two puppies, and already she's back at it. She has quite the appetite. Oh, sorry, Bernadette, I didn't realize you were doing some clean up there. So there we go. We'll let those ones just go at it. Next is Green Collar Boy. Green Collar Boy is another one of these ginormous puppies in this litter. Now when I say they're ginormous, I don't mean they're gonna end up being standard size and be 60 pounds as adults. I just mean these are solid puppies. These puppies are filled out. They're in excellent shape. 
Bernadette has done a wonderful job with getting them to be so robust. And this is our little tri baby. Yeah, hi. He's got all these beautiful markings on him. He's three colors right now. He, he's a sable, so even though this looks like phantom, it's not. It's, it's sable. That's what pattern he is. You can see on his back, his chocolate is changing. You can see the dark here and the lighter here. He's going to end up being the same color as Bernadette. And these little markings on the side of his face and over his eyebrows are going to disappear entirely. This is the puppy who got a kennel cough first. And this little fellow is now at 900 grams even. Doing just great. It's very, very, very substantial puppy. Oh my goodness. That's my nose. I don't think you're going to get anything out of there. <laughs> no. So that's our green collar boy. There you go. You go find mama. And then last but not least is our little pink collar girl. And she's doing some coughing right now. So it's a good chance for you to just see what it's like when they cough. Here. Hi, baby. Hi. So you can hear her cough is not as uh, bronchial sounding. She has some, some congestion in her tracheal area. Uh, nothing to be concerned about at this point in time. Um, but she has a little squeak that she does. Oh, she sounds quite sad when she, when she coughs. So little pink collar girl is the one that I was saying we were just a little bit worried about because she has not eaten as well as I'd like her to. So what are we going to do with her? Well, we're going to make sure that we put her on Bernadette and that she does nurse. We also have her nursing off of the milking station to ensure she gets a good supply of food. We do even more checking for her to make sure that she's not becoming dehydrated, which she's not at all. And if we find that she's not really keeping up with eating and drinking, then we will tube feed her. And we don't want to do that because the tube, of course, goes down into her stomach and that irritates her throat a bit. It's also stressful because it's not a very pleasant thing to have a tube stuck down your throat. So as I said, we're trying to eliminate the stress on the puppies. So we're going to try to avoid that as much as possible. The milking station really provides us with a good option for that. And Pink Collar Girl is 648 grams. So she's just a little bit slower in her weight gain this week. And you can see Bernadette jumped out. And that's because the puppies are at an age now where she feels quite comfortable with them spending more time on their own. She has a bed in here and she goes and she sleeps in her bed. She can see the puppies, she can hear the puppies. She's right there if they ask for her, but she is starting to ignore their, re their requests for her more and more. So these puppies are getting really close to being able to eat uh, solid food. And because Bernadette is seeming to be quite anxious to wean them, we will probably start them on some solid food in the next half week or so. We'll see how they're doing. Uh, with the kennel cough, it makes it a little bit trickier because they have to learn to lap and anything, as I said, that causes aggravation in the throat area makes them cough more. So we'll let them be our guide. Uh, we'll use the milking station uh, and make sure they are supported 100% and do everything we can to help these guys recover fully and quickly. So that's our video for today. Um, it's a bit of a different one, as I said. We aren't usually talking about puppies who are sick. Uh, things do happen. Life is fragile. Puppies get sick just like kids. And this is just like if you had a newborn baby who developed a bad bronchial cough. You would be worried, you would be concerned, but you would have every expectation that, provided it didn't develop into pneumonia, that things will be all right. So we seem to be cautiously optimistic right now I would say getting towards where we're cautiously optimistic that uh, we're going to have this run its course without the puppies developing pneumonia. Now I could say that in two hours later one of them could develop pneumonia but for now everybody seems to be holding their own and just uh, struggling through with the cough. So we hope you enjoyed today's video, even though the subject was a little bit more serious and not just uh, cute puppies bouncing around. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to know more about kennel cough or anything to do with puppy health, anything to do about Labradoodles, please just post your questions in the comments. I'm always happy to answer them for you. And thanks so much for watching.